Hey guys, this is John with uh, Forward Talk, and I've come today to share a to share an episode with you guys. It's my first time doing a response video, but before we get into that video, I want to encourage you guys, as always, to go and um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, please help us get to the next stage of subscribers, which is 700, and we're ultimately trying to reach the um, uh, the first big goal of 1,000 subscribers. So please take the opportunity right now to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you have not seen Restored with a Therapist and a Theologian, then I'm asking you to go over to that YouTube channel where my wife and I discuss issues from the perspective of both psychology and theology. So go subscribe to Restored with a Therapist and a Theologian. And I will have notes in, I will have uh, links in the show notes here to where you can support our ministry financially if you should decide to do so. But today, uh, we're going to be reacting to a Justin Peters and Tom Pennington video where they talk about um, where they talk about cessationism. And they have a particular argument that they lay, lay out in this video that um, I want to analyze. And I think that it is um, actually an absolutely uh, weak and terrible argument uh, against the miraculous gifts. And so I'm going to share that video with you guys. And um, I want to, um, I definitely want to take a look at this. And I th I just think it's uh, really bad logic and argumentation. So let's get started with this video. Yeah, I've told people, and people don't like this, but it's true. Uh, the very fact that there is a debate today as to whether or not these sign gifts continue to be in operation is self-evident proof that they're not. So notice what that was Justin Peters. Notice what Justin Peters says there. He says the very fact that there is a debate about whether or not these sign gifts continue is proof that they, they don't continue. Now, this is just, um, as you will see, I think a terrible argument um, on the face. So let's get into this video with Justin Peters and Dr. Tom Pennington. So let me preface my comments before we go any further about this video by saying that neither Peters nor Pennington are novices, and particularly within the context of the cessationist conversation. Both are respected preachers and apologists for their position. Peters holds a Master of Divinity and a Master of Theology from Southwest Baptist uh, Theological Seminary, and Dr. Pennington has a master's from Bob Jones University. He also did some PhD work at Bob Jones University and then was eventually awarded an honorary doctorate from the master's seminary, which uh, is John MacArthur's seminary. So the men who present this argument in this video are, are formally educated, and they are well respected, and they think this argument's is valid as as do many others who watch their videos. So because of the the uh, because of the uh, quality of the guys that are presenting these arguments in terms of being formally educated, being well known, being speakers, being authors, and and are well recepted are well accepted in the reformed community. Um, they're, they're mainstream conference speakers, so forth and so on. So, so these are not fringe cessationist guys. The video starts off with Peters saying that people don't like it, but it's true um, that the fact that there's even a, a debate about the gifts of the Spirit continuing in operation uh, is, is the, the fact that there's even a ba debate is self-evident proof that they do not continue. And Pennington responded with, if you didn't hear it just then, you'll hear it in a moment, with, with absolutely. So so let me remind you again, before we go further, that, that Peter's ministry has been spent affirming cessationism and rejecting continuationism. And these uh, comments that he made are long thought out. In fact, he did not say them off the cuff. He said he said it before to the point to where uh, you know, a lot of people don't like it. So it's not the first time he's made this comment. And uh, so so Peters has dealt with these issues for decades, if you know anything about his ministry. And Pennington has written a book called A Biblical Case for Cessationism, Why the Miraculous Gifts of the Spirit Have Ceased. 
And so consequently, Peters and Pennington are saying what they have thought through and stated on many occasions. So that's what makes this argument as poorly crafted as it is even more shocking. The fact that they have spent years thinking through this issue and then make an argument like what they just made. So one would be hard pressed, I think, to find a worst argument against miraculous gift gifts, especially among supposedly erudite men. Stating that the mere fact there is a debate about the gifts is proof that the gifts do not continue as philosophical, logical, and theological malpractice. Men with their education and experience, that is, Peters and Pennington, uh, ought to be able to not only formulate better arguments than that, but they should have the intellectual fortitude to be able to resist making such unsophisticated theological argumentation. And there are several aspects of this video that I could, could critique. However, my response to the faulty philosophical, logical, and theological argumentation is going to focus uh, primarily on the concept and the idea that the fact there's a debate about whether the gifts continue uh, is proof that they don't. And so I think basically what Peters is saying is there's all these extreme faith healers. There's all of these word of faithers out there that are claiming to perform miracles that are shoddy, that are questionable, that are, uh, you know, all of these things fraudulent. And so he's saying the fact that that we even have a debate uh, around these types of miracles and these signs should prove that the sign gifts from the New Testament um, are no longer um, are no longer in effect. And so all I can say to this is just this is bad on every level, and we're going to walk through it some more. But let's just back the video up here if we can hear Justin say this one more time before we get started told people and people don't like this but it's true uh the very fact that there is a debate oh. today as to whether or not these sign gifts continue to be in operation is self-evident proof that they're not <laughs> and so there it is again the fact that there is a debate that they exist or uh, about whether these sign gifts are real or these miracles are real is proof that they the the sign gifts do not continue and so if the presence of a debate and skepticism about the signs mean they do not continue, then I suggest today that that means they never existed, that they never were in operation, because there has always been a debate and skepticism about the supernatural and the, and the ministry of both Jesus and the apostles from the very beginning, from some group or another. So if we can find signs in the scripture that were debated or disbelieved, then should we assume that they are false and that the gifts weren't in operation or that the sign gifts weren't continuing in that particular time because there was uh, a question or a debate about whether or not they existed? Well, Peters would have us believe so. If Justin Peters' argument is true, then if there was ever a debate at any point about whether a sign was legitimate or whether uh, miracles were uh, real, then then that would disprove their continuation at that particular point. So let's take a look at Scripture. There are, there are two big signs in Scripture related to the ministry of Jesus that came directly from God himself, miracles, signs that uh, didn't come through the mediation of a, of a mere human apostle or any other person who was endowed with the gifts of the Spirit. They came, these signs were given and came directly from Yahweh himself, and yet people still disbelieved those miracles. So Isaiah seven fourteen says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. The sign of the virgin birth has its ultimate fulfillment in the virgin birth of Messiah in Matthew 1, to 23. It says this, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. He quotes Isaiah 7, 14, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now remember, Isaiah 7 said that this was a sign directly from God, from the Lord himself. It's a sign directly from God. It was not, again, given through a human agent like an apostle. 
uh, it was directly from the Lord himself. And even though this was a direct sign, and it's the same same Greek word, if you look in the Septuagint, as the as the New Testament words for signs and miracles. Um, it was a direct sign from the Lord, yet many in Jesus' day debated and disbelieved it. There were many that did not believe that Jesus, that Jesus was virgin born. The Jews accused Jesus of being born of fornication. They said this, you are doing the work. Jesus, well, Jesus told uh, the Jews and the Pharisees, you are doing the works your father did. And they said unto him, we be not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God, John 8, 41. Now, God himself had given a sign and they wouldn't believe it. It was predicted and prophesied and it was fulfilled according to Matthew and Many did not believe and accept this, this supernatural sign of the virgin birth in Messiah. They debated and rejected the sign of the virgin birth. And uh, Jews to this day reject Jesus as the Messiah and his virgin birth. And so we could say, just like Peter's, the fact that there is a debate about this supernatural sign directly from Yahweh himself is proof that the sign is not legitimate or that the supernatural doesn't happen or didn't happen in that day. Another sign that God performed that most people debated and disbelieved was the sign of Jesus' resurrection. Matthew 12, 38 to 41, the Bible said, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign shall be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of the great fish, also will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 12, 38 to 41. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the resurrection of Jesus was a sign that Jesus said would be given to an adulterous and an evil generation. He would be given to these Pharisees and scribes. He would give them this sign. And it's the same, comes from the same Greek word that Peters and Pennington wants to use the language of uh, sign gifts. That's a disputed concept and terminology in and of itself, but I'm not going to go there in this episode. <clears throat> but Jesus plainly said that his resurrection was a sign <clears throat> to the Jews. There was certainly debate about whether Jesus was raised from the dead. In fact, Paul was still uh, uh, dealing with people denying the resurrection, resurrection deniers in 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 14. According to Peter's, if a sign is real, then there would be no debate about it whatsoever. And God the Father actually performed this sign as well, uh, and they didn't believe him. Romans 8 and 11 says God raised Jesus from the dead. So, uh, this was a miracle. This was a sign miracle. It was a resurrection of the dead. And so how does Peter's argument account for the fact that people debated and disbelieved uh, a sign God the Father directly performed on the man Christ Jesus by raising him from the dead? In fact, Jesus said that people would not believe even if one rose from the dead to tell them in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. So signs don't confirm anything. Signs do not prove or create conversions or remove debate or remove skepticism or arguments about their reality. Jesus said, uh, instead of sending one of his brothers that was still on earth, sending a, someone to his brothers that were still on earth to preach to them, uh, if he said if they have they have Moses and the prophets, if they won't hear them, they wouldn't believe the one rose from the dead. And the fact that they wouldn't believe the one rose from the dead is is in the proof that Jesus rose from the dead and they didn't believe. They rejected him, had every reason in the world why it wasn't true. So it is an absolutely absurd argument to say that uh, to say that skepticism about miraculous signs proves that the gift does not exist or that the gift of miracles does not continue. There were false signs when Jesus and the apostles were performing miracles, when even Pennington and Peters agree that uh, miraculous gifts were at work. 
there were false signs and false miracles, and there was debates and rejection of those signs and miracles. Yet this does nothing to negate the real miracles that they perform. So in the rest of the clip, you'll hear what Pennington had to say about Peter's comments. You're absolutely right. and that goes You're absolutely right. So Dr. Pennington tells him that his argument is absolutely right. And I was thinking of this a moment ago when you were when you were talking. It goes back to the purpose of the sign gifts. They're so he's going to talk about here, uh, make the point about what the purpose of the sign gifts are. Confirm the messenger. They confirm the messenger. It doesn't work. So he said the purpose the 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 purpose of the uh, of the signs is to confirm the messenger, and uh, he says, "What good is a sign gift if it doesn't work?" And so that that makes absolute <clears throat> that makes absolute destruction of the miracles and the ministry of both Jesus and the apostles. So <clears throat> if that's true, if by work, if a, if by working the sign, if by the sign gift working, he means that the observer of the signs uh, believe the messenger is from God or that the miracle was real, then the miracles of Jesus and the apostles themselves did not work by that criteria. Pennington also stated that the sign was to confirm the messenger. If true, both Jesus and the apostles were cosmic failures because they had people that consistently disbelieved and rejected both them and their miracles and ministries. So the very people in front of whom Jesus and the apostles performed or in front of whom Jesus performed miracles crucified him. They crucified him. They rejected that his miracles confirmed him and authenticated him as a Messiah once again demonstrating the utter and absolute absurdity of the argument that if the sign gifts truly continued, there would be no debate about whether or not they did. This is just absolute nonsense. I must note in conclusion that this argument from Peters and Pennington is not a biblical argument. It's merely a philosophical argument. Notice there's no biblical citation. This is just something they pulled off the top of their head, something they pulled out of their own human minds. And so let me make a challenge here. Um, if by chance, Peters or Pennington, either one should see this video, uh, show me the verse in the Bible that says that signs, the sign gifts, were to confirm the messengers. Show me that verse in the Bible, and we will go from there. I don't think you can. And you definitely can't demonstrate that the purpose of every miracle and every sign was to confirm the messenger. Um, it's just simply not something that you can demonstrate in scripture. If you are one of the listeners tonight or whenever you're watching this episode, I'm recording it outside in the evening. Um, if you, if you're listening to this and you can think you have the verse that demonstrates that signs were to confirm the messenger, then share below. I don't think that exists. Um, that's not the purpose. That was not the purpose of, of miracles in the supernatural. And it certainly wasn't the only purpose of miracles in the supernatural. And it wasn't the purpose of every miraculous occurrence. So uh, this is just a terrible argument, very weak argument with no theological grounding. All right, brothers and sisters, uh, once again, take the time to hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And again, I remind you, go go subscribe to Restored with a Therapist and a Theologian, and we would appreciate any financial support that you can give. And if you can support us financially, share the channel with someone and ask them to subscribe. Thank you so very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.